Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I want to show you guys how to take a spore print of any mushroom that you don't know how to identify. Now you guys may remember these mushrooms from my vlog from about a week or so ago, and these mushrooms are overly old now, they're actually kind of frozen, but that's okay because they're mature now, we know they're fully matured. And whenever you want to take a spore print of anything, you want to make sure that the mushroom you're taking a spore print of is fully matured. So we're going to cut these guys off, we're going to collect them up, and we're going to try to take a spore print. So one important thing that we need to keep in mind is since we don't know what this mushroom is, it's very important that we put on a glove, and this is a powder-free glove, so I don't have any sort of contamination whenever I'm actually checking for the spore print. This will also help to keep my hands clean, so just in case this mushroom is toxic, I don't have to worry about being accidentally poisoned by consuming or scratching my eye or anything of that sort. Okay, so now that I have both of my gloves on and I have my knife in hand, all I simply need to do is find the base of the mushroom and then cut it off at the base, just like so. And because it's frozen, it's very easy to do. As you can see, it fell off on the ground with just a slight touch, and I think it's because it's frozen. All right, now whenever we get up close and personal with these mushrooms, you guys can see how the stems attach to the cap, and this is going to be very important for our identification of these mushrooms. So we want to make sure that we keep the stems intact and we want to make sure that we try to keep the majority of these mushrooms intact. Another thing that we want to keep in mind is what kind of tree or wood or growing conditions, whether it be on the soil or on a conifer log or hardwood log. We really want to keep that in mind because that's also going to be important for our identification of these mushrooms. All right, now after you've cut your mushrooms off of the tree or the log or even the ground, just depending on what kind of mushroom you're trying to check here, make sure you get yourself some wax paper. And the reason for that is, is because plastic will actually cling to the mushroom and create moisture inside of the mushroom and it might actually give you a false impression of the spore print. So make sure you keep that in mind. Wind's trying to blow my wax paper away from me. Now after doing that, I personally find it best to take your mushroom inside of the wax paper like I have here and simply put it inside of a Ziploc bag. The reason for that is you do not want to contaminate anything else in your bag or any other food that you might be foraging with this unidentified mushroom. So we want to make sure that we have this clean and separated. That's a lot of the reason that we're also wearing these gloves. Okay, so now that we have our mushrooms in our bag, now let's go home and take ourselves a spore print so we can actually see what kind of mushroom we have here. Okay, once you've gotten your mushroom home, you want to try to get a couple things out. One of those is going to be a white piece of paper, and the second is going to be a clear or semi-clear piece of plastic or glass. It doesn't really matter. You just want to make sure that you have something that you can cover the mushroom with. And then as you can see, we also have our mushroom here inside of the wax paper, inside of the plastic bag. So just simply set the mushroom cluster that you've gathered with the spore bearing surface face down on the piece of paper. So in this case, the spore bearing surface is going to be these gills. If you've collected a polypore mushroom, it's going to be the pores, which will still be on the underside of the mushroom. However, there are mushrooms like puffballs, for example, where the spore bearing surface is actually on the inside of the mushroom. So you may have to cut the mushroom in half and then lay the inside half of it face down just like that so that way you can get your spore print and then now at this point all we simply want to do is we just want to take our container and lay it over top and what this is going to do is this is going to prevent any possible spores from releasing out into the rest of our living space so that way we don't have any possible contamination and we don't have to worry about any toxicology effects or any toxic effects from this mushroom because we have no idea what it is yet. And that's the whole reason for taking the spore print and doing it this way. So we just simply want to let this sit here and we're going to let this sit for almost a full 24 hours and we should see some spores gathered on the side of this piece of paper. Okay, so now that it's been overnight, all we simply have to do is just lift up our container, whether that be glass or plastic. We're just going to set it right side up. And then now we just have to simply lift up the mushroom. 
And there we can see the spore print right here on this piece of paper very, very clearly. You know, and right there you guys can already get a really good idea of the color of the spore print because we used white paper. Now there are a lot of mushrooms that do have a white spore print. However, whenever you collect them up on white paper, you will be able to see the difference because of the mass of the spores that has collected. All right, at this point, now the next thing you really want to do is you want to write down the color of this spore print on this piece of paper, and this way it'll help you to remember the color of this spore print. So this is kind of a very dingy rust brown color. It could even be construed as a purple to rust brown. So make sure you keep in mind that personal interpretation is going to be very different based on what your eyeballs see. Alright, so that covers how you guys can take your very own spore print whenever you're trying to identify any specific mushroom that you may be trying to learn what exactly it is and how to identify it. Now, another thing to keep in mind is a spore print is just one very small part of the process in identifying an actual mushroom. This is not always conclusive, and there could be another mushroom that you may be mistaking just based on what guide you have or what resources of information you have available. So a spore print is not something that is utterly 100% reliable, but it is a lot more reliable than trusting your eyes on what you see in some pictures and then making assumptions based off of that. So this is just another way to get you guys a little bit closer to taking a spore print and to identifying any other mushrooms that you want to learn how to identify. Obviously, we didn't identify this particular mushroom, but this video isn't about how to identify a mushroom per se. It's more about how to take a spore print. So I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned just a little bit of something. And I hope this video helps you guys to take spore prints a lot more effectively and in a safe and non-toxic manner so that way you don't have to worry about any sort of contamination whenever you are collecting unidentified mushrooms.